everybody! I'm Miss Hannah from the Highland Park Library, and welcome to Library in Your Living Room. I'm coming to you from my living room. Now, I know you guys have heard a lot about how you should wash your hands as many times a day as you can, and that you should use plenty of soap and water. But there's actually a lot more to soap than just fighting germs. Today, I'm going to show you four different science experiments that you can do with soap. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about surface tension, force, um, density, and also chemical reactions. So let's get started. Uh, for our first experiment, we're going to need a shallow dish, water, um, some herbs, and of course our soap. I'm going to angle the camera a little bit so you can see my dish better. All right, so here I have a pie plate that's got some water in it. And now I'm going to dump some herbs into it. And this is just old Italian seasoning that I have in my spice cabinet. But you can use pepper or other herbs. Um, it just has to be something that floats on top of the water. All right, so next I'm going to take some dish soap and put some on my finger. And then I'm going to dip my finger in the water. Whoa! <laughs> and you saw as soon as I put a little bit of dish soap in the water, those herbs just flew away from the soap into the opposite sides of the bowl. That was pretty awesome. I'm going to do it again. All right, so a little soap on my finger. Drop in the water. Just we'll do it like that. Yeah, that was actually crazy. Um, so um, the reason why that happened was something called surface tension. Um, so the water is made up of these itty bitty particles called molecules. And the water molecules want to stay as close together as they can get. And we call that surface tension when they try to stay really close together. Um, and when we added that soap to the water, that broke the surface tension the water molecules noticed the soap and they were like, hey, that's not water, that's soap. I'm running away. And so the water molecules went away from the soap and toward the edges of the dish where the other water molecules were. And uh, we were able to see that because of the um, Italian seasoning that was on the top of the water. We saw that move along with the water molecules. Um, if you want to do more science experiments with surface tension, you can try um, putting different objects in the water to see what else could break the surface tension. Um, you could try like a piece of paper or maybe a spoon and try dipping different things in the water and seeing what makes those herbs shoot to the edges of the bowl. All right, so for my next experiment, we're going to make some bubbles. So I have another dish here that has water in it. I'll angle the camera again so you can see. And then we're going to add some dish soap to the water. I'll do a healthy squirt. And then I'm going to stir it around a little bit with my finger. And if you have a bubble wand, now would be a great time to dip the bubble wand in the water. I don't have a bubble wand, so I had to make one. So this used to be a bottle of Dr. Pepper. I drank the Dr. Pepper and cut the bottom off of the bottle, like that. And then I'm going to put a sock on the bottom. And then I'm going to blow out of the top of the bottle, and it'll, it'll make bubbles. All right, so I'm going to dip this in the water angle the camera again. So all I did was blow blow the top of the bottle and made a bunch of bubbles. So one thing that I've always wondered is why bubbles are always round. How come you never see a square bubble or a triangle bubble? And that's because of something called force. 
So there are air molecules that are inside the bubble and air molecules that are outside of the bubble. And the molecules outside are trying to push on the bubbles inside and the bubbles on the inside or the molecules on the inside are trying to push out. And the um, air molecules on the inside want to stay in a shape that's going to be safe and stable for them so that the molecules on the outside aren't forcing anything on them. So the um, air molecules inside um, are going to get in a shape that they think is going to be safe and stable, and that is a round shape. So because the molecules are staying in a round shape to be safe, the bubbles will always be round too. Um, if you want to do more experiments with bubbles, you can try making different, um, different recipes for bubble solution. Um, so you could try experimenting with different soaps, um, like would shampoo make a better bubble than dish soap? I don't know. Or would um, mixing dish soap and milk make a better bubble than dish soap and water? So yeah, you could try, you know, different combinations of different ingredients and see what makes the best bubble. All right, experiment number three. We're going to need a clear glass um, jar or a glass bowl. We're going to need dish soap and then we'll need any other two liquids. I'm going to angle this again. There we go. Um, so I'm going to use honey and almond milk. So what we're going to do is pour each liquid inside of the container. So I'm going to do the dish soap first. All right, so we've got our dish soap in there. And then I'm going to add some honey. Oh, it's so sticky. <laughs> and then last, I'm going to add some milk. And what you'll see eventually is that um, the liquids are going to turn into like three different layers. So you've got at the very bottom, you've got a layer of honey. And then in the middle, we've got a layer of dish soap starting. And then at the very top, we have the layer of almond milk. And um, that happens because of something called density. So um, density is um, something in science that measures how heavy an object is compared to how big it is. So something that's really heavy for its size is going to be more dense, and something that's light for its size is going to be less dense. And the more dense um, an object is, the farther down it's going to sink. So of our three liquids, the honey is the most dense because it's on the very bottom of the glass. And then the dish soap is kind of in the middle, you know, it's not super dense sinking to the very bottom, but it's also not floating to the top. And then our almond milk is the least dense because it's on top of everything else. Um, so if you wanted to experiment more with density, you could try, you know, different kinds of liquids. Um, test which ones sink below the dish soap and which ones float above the dish soap. And um, solid objects also have density, so you can test the density of solid objects by um, putting them in a bathtub full of water. Um, one fun thing to do is with toys, um, try different toys in your bathtub and see which ones float and which ones sink, um, and you can test the density of your objects that way. All right, for my final experiment, we're going to do a chemical reaction. So we'll need another glass container. I'll angle the camera once again. All right, there's our glass container. We've got dish soap. We've got baking soda. And we've got lemon juice. So first thing, we're going to add the lemon juice to the jar. And then we'll add baking soda, or <laughs> this isn't baking soda, this is soap. We'll add soap. And 
and then we'll add baking soda. And check it out! We've got some foam going on. We've got a chemical reaction. Now it's getting really foamy and it might spill all over my computer, so I'm gonna get a dishcloth. All right, I'm gonna move that out of the way before it explodes everywhere. So you might be wondering why that just happened. Um, and it's um, a classic acid-base reaction. So um, in chemistry, we have something called the pH scale and it goes from zero to 14 and different chemicals are assigned different numbers. So um, if it has a low number, like a zero or a one or a two, it's an acid. If it has a higher number, like 12, 13, or 14, it's a base. If you mix something with a low number, an acid, with something that has a high number, a base, you're gonna get a lovely chemical reaction. So the um, lemon juice has a low pH. Its uh, pH is about 2, so it's an acid. And then the baking soda has a higher pH of about 9.5, so it's a base. And um, when you mix those two things together, it creates that foam. Um, the dish soap is a pH of about 7, so um, chemists say that it's neutral. It's neither an acid nor a base. So it doesn't make the reaction happen, but it does make a lot more foam happen. So that's why I added it. And you can experiment with um, other liquids in your house um, to see if they react with baking soda. Um, some liquids that I like to test with baking soda are um, lemon juice, which we just saw. Um, you could also do pickle juice or vinegar or orange juice even, because um, those all are pretty acidic and they'll make the foam happen. So um, those are all the experiments that I have for you today. Um, if you're interested in seeing more science experiments, you can head to our website, hplibrary.org. And then under our database tab, there's a database called Science Flicks. And that has um, different videos and articles all about science. Um, there's also an ebook that I want to show you guys um, from Libby. And um, it's called the Smithsonian Maker Lab by um, Jack, I have his name written, <laughs> Jack Challoner. Um, and this also has some really great science experiments in it. So yeah, so check out either Science Flicks um, from our databases or Maker Lab from our Libby app um, for more experiments. Um, I'd like to thank you guys once again for joining me to see all these weird experiments I'm doing with dish soap in my living room, um, please check out our website hplibrary.org for more library in your living room programs. And until next time, stay safe and please wash your hands with plenty of soap.